What is up guys? So I hope everybody's having a great day. Today I'm going to be showing you guys or unveiling to you guys one of the coolest things I've got so far. I'm so excited about this. If you have kept up with my Instagram or with this channel at all, you know I am a tech nerd and I get to unbox that. That's right, it is a two foot by four foot CNC from I2R. I2R I8. It is a awesome machine. It is a spindle driven uh, two foot by four foot as I said before CNC that is completely run off UNC, a uh, UC CNC, I'm sorry. UC CNC is the controller and I'll show you guys some more about that later on but right now I need to get this thing unboxed and get it put together and we'll try to make a few test cuts. So let's get at it. So the first step in getting the CNC put together is to install these casters. These casters are actually really nice as they have a really stiff rubber pad on the front. And as you turn this small red knob on the inside, it lifts or lowers that rubber pad and actually hard stops the machine on the ground and keeps it from rolling around. And you can also use them to level it out. They're just held on by four Allen head screws and are pretty simple to install. With the casters installed, after that you need to install these L brackets for the lower shelf on the cart. You do this by leaving the frame rails with the caster still facing up and install two of these Allen head screws, slip the L bracket over it, and tighten down the screws. It's a really simple process, and it goes by pretty quick, especially using something like a T-handle or even an electronic impact or drill. But I wanted to show this could be done completely with hand tools. With all the L brackets in position, make sure all of the Allen head screws are good and tight, and then flip the frame rails over onto their casters and install the bed of the shelf. This is done by laying it in place and installing two Allen head screws in each corner. Do not fully tighten them. This will allow you a little bit of movement when installing some of the parts later. Next, it's time to put the spindle and the Z-axis motor into place. You do this by laying this onto the brace on the upper arms of the CNC. And then there are six Allen head screws that line it up that attribute to making sure the alignment of the Z-axis is correct. Make sure to fully tighten these down so the Z-axis and the spindle cannot wiggle or move. Make sure to be careful installing the screws. This is aluminum, and if you strip out the threads, it can cause a lot of problems. After you get all the screws in and tight, lift the vertical arms of the CNC into place. Two of the carrier bolts in the front are already installed, and then you need to install in one large carrier bolt into the back of each A-arm, and then four smaller bolts along the top edge of this bracket. With the vertical arms secured in place, go ahead and put on the covers for the vertical sides of the arm. This will protect the servo motors as well as some of the other electronics. They are held on by five small Allen head screws. The positioning is really easy and it's almost foolproof. You just need a shorter Allen wrench for the bottom two to be able to spin it while that close to the bed of the CNC. 
Remember, all five of these screws are screwing directly into plastic, so do not over-tighten them. Found the easiest way was to just install all five screws lightly and then go back and tighten them up one by one. This made the cover hold itself in place and made installation much easier. After that, you need to install the four rubber mount bushings for the bed of the CNC. I found it simplest just to press the bolt through the bushing and let the bolt hold the bushing in place as you set the bed of the CNC into place. Having casters on the cart made this much easier as with a little bit of help you just pick the bed vertically and then roll the cart underneath the bed and set it into place. Once the bed is in place you must align all of the bolt holes underneath the bottom of the bed with the cushions and then tighten all of the larger carrier bolts down holding the bed in place. Installing the electronics is pretty simple. These use standard computer plugs that are then slightly screwed into place to hold them in place and stop them from jarring loose. Just make sure not to bend any pins or strip any threads. After plugging in the box, it's time for the moment of truth. Pop the emergency switch and turn the computer on and see if the machine powers up. Once the machine is powered up, run it through a few test cycles. Just manually move all of the axes around and then rehome the machine just to make sure all servos and the operating systems and things like that are moving properly before moving on to your first test cut. For my first test cut, I was just doing some simple lettering, so I went with a V-car bit from Bits and Bits. This is a white side, 60 degree quarter inch bit that is coated with their Astra coating and it makes the cutting really really well. Use the touch pad to set your z-axis off of the material and then you can make your first test cut. Don't rush it just let it take its time. There's no need to really push the machine for your first cut. You just want to make sure that it is accurately cutting and that it's doing what it's supposed to do. What you're doing for the first cut really should be something simple just to test the basics of the machine. Alright guys, as you can see, it's together, and I am excited about this thing. I did make a quick test cut, and it all went pretty good, and this thing is going to be a lot of fun. There's nothing you can't build with a CNC. Literally, you're limited by your imagination. So, there's going to be a lot of fun projects coming up. I have a really cool one in mind coming up soon that is going to really put this thing through its paces. That being said, go check out I2R on Instagram or uh, at their website if you want to get more information on the machines. I'll leave links in the description below. Also, leave a comment. What do you guys want to see me build? What would you build? If you had a CNC, what would you make? I want to know. So let me know, and I will try to answer all the comments I can, as well as if you have any questions about the machine or how it runs, feel free to ask. But guys, I'm getting out of here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the like button. It really helps me grow, and I appreciate that. And you can follow me on Instagram, at jpangwoodworking. And I'm out of here, guys. See you on the next one.